In this video, we'll discuss the two major mobile platforms, Android from Google and iOS from Apple. We'll focus especially on the strengths and weaknesses of each platform as it relates to creating your own original mobile apps. Let's begin by discussing the Android devices. Android is an operating system that was created by Google. Chances are if you've seen a smartphone that's not an iPhone, it probably runs Android. Since Google makes the Android operating system available to a wide variety of phone manufacturers, many different companies create Android phones. Furthermore, many tablets, such as the Kindle Fire or Samsung Galaxy, also run on an operating system that's based on Android. Android is best characterized by the word open. The operating system itself is open source, meaning that the code is given for free to anyone who wants it. This means that companies like Amazon have taken the Android operating system and created their own modified version of it for their Kindle Fire. This open source nature of Android is one of the main reasons that it's been adopted by so many different phone manufacturers. The openness of the Android platform extends to the devices themselves. Simply connecting an Android phone to your computer allows you to access all of the phone's files so you can do with them whatever you like. This provides a great deal of flexibility for users who want to explore how mobile devices and mobile apps really work. Making apps is never easy. It essentially involves writing mini programs that are designed for the small screen of a mobile device. Professionals create mobile apps using the SDKs, or Software Developer Kits. For Android, the SDK requires you to write the program in Java. Before you could ever hope to make an app, you'd need to learn this programming language. Google has gone out of its way, however, to make creating apps accessible to everyone. Toward that end, they created App Inventor, an intuitive and graphical alternative for making apps without writing complex programs. In early 2012, Google passed App Inventor on to the MIT Center for Mobile Learning, who currently maintains the program. App Inventor is a fabulous tool for teachers and students who are interested in creating their own mobile apps. Combined with the openness of Android, App Inventor allows you to create and share original apps in just a few hours. The Android platform does have some drawbacks. The operating system can sometimes be rather flaky, crashing unexpectedly or otherwise behaving badly. The Android marketplace also frustrates some users, who feel it contains too much junk and not enough high-quality apps. Perhaps an unexpected consequence of keeping the marketplace a little too open. There's no question though that if you're looking to have control over your mobile device, create new apps with and for students, and easily share apps between users, the Android platform should be your first choice. Next, let's talk about Apple devices. Apple has created its own operating system for all of its mobile devices that is called iOS. Only Apple devices are allowed to run iOS. And Apple devices are only allowed to run iOS, which gives you a proper sense of how Apple has taken the opposite approach of Android and has made the iOS devices closed rather than open. Apple strives to control the entire product from hardware to software. Apple, more or less, has just two mobile devices, the iPhone and the iPad. There are slight variations between newer and older generations of these devices, but for our purposes, they're more or less all the same. As you probably know, the iPhone and iPad have been tremendously popular and are seen as market leaders for smartphones and tablets, respectively. This is often credited to their simple design and reliability, but the argument could be made that their success comes from the end-to-end -end control that Apple has maintained over their devices. The devices are strikingly closed, not open. The iPad doesn't even contain any screws that would allow you to physically open the device. The only way to get any software onto iOS devices is by using Apple's iTunes software. This end-to-end -end control continues to the App Store, where Apple maintains complete autonomy in deciding which apps are allowed in and which are not. While this frustrates some developers, the quality control has greatly benefited the consumer, 
who can be sure that the apps from the App Store will be reliable and deliver what they promise. One of Apple's most contentious control issues is that they do not allow mobile devices to play Flash animations. Flash is an extremely common format for interactive simulations or videos online, but Apple maintains that the format is unreliable and causes devices to crash, and so they simply do not support Flash, even though this frustrates many customers. Making apps for iOS devices is extremely difficult. The iOS SDK, which is called Xcode, requires that all apps be written in Objective-C, a very sophisticated programming language. Making apps in Xcode is really only accessible to professional programmers. Apple exerts further control on those who wish to make apps by requiring a paid subscription of $100 in order to be able to create and install original apps on your own device. This fee allows you only to install the app on your device, no one else's. More or less, the only way to share your app with another device is to get it accepted by the App Store, which is very difficult to do. There are a few exceptions to this rule for educators, where a teacher may be allowed to share original apps with a classroom full of devices. Fortunately, there is third-party software that makes it easier for new users to make their own iOS apps. We found the most useful such product is called PhoneGap. With PhoneGap, you can create a mobile website using HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, all of which are much easier to master than Objective-C. You can then upload the website you create to a cloud-based build service that will create the app for multiple platforms all at the same time, iOS, Android, Blackberry, etc. PhoneGap is more complicated than App Inventor, but it allows you to make apps for multiple mobile platforms all at the same time. However, to install any app onto your iPhone or iPad, you still need to have the $100 iOS developer subscription. To use PhoneGap, it really helps if you are already comfortable with HTML and CSS. The more JavaScript you know or can learn, the better. Making apps for iOS devices is really only possible for those with this sort of basic background in programming or website development. The end-to-end -end control that characterizes the Apple products makes them a favorite among consumers because of their reliability and performance. But for those hoping to create their own apps in and for the classroom, the lack of openness poses a real problem that should not be taken lightly. It's possible for a non-professional to make their own iPhone and iPad apps, but it's much easier on the Android platform. It's worth noting that there are several other mobile platforms, such as BlackBerry and Windows Phone. At present, a third-party solution such as PhoneGap would represent the best approach for creating original apps on these devices.